This is Social L Ministries, where we set the captives free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This message may sound like a, I told you so, but it's not, and that's not really my intent. I have seen and heard the cries of people. I know the Lord has too. So even though this message may sound like a, I told you so, it is more a message of if you were deceived to please do not let it happen again. A lot of times you may speak about the Antichrist. And maybe some people want me to speak more about the coming of Christ. Well, the Bible lets us know the Antichrist will come before Christ Jesus. And just like how people had opportunity to choose Jesus or Barabbas, and they chose Barabbas instead, the people even said, let the blood of Jesus be upon our hands and our children. They wanted Jesus gone so much. We have choices. There's coming a time when people will be full, well, people will be given a, an opportunity. And yes, even forced to take the mark of the beast and to worship his image. Things that have been done recently all points to those things. They all point to those things. Choices have consequences. If a person takes the mark of the beast, that is it. They're damned. There's no, there's no recovering from it. Now we have an opportunity where if we're deceived or if we wanted something so badly, the Lord allows us to have it and then realize, uh oh, this was a mistake. That we do not allow those things to happen and to also teach the future generations to look out for these things. History as a way of repeating itself. And sometimes we look back at history and we say that if we were alive during that time, I would have been on the other side, the right side. And for recent history, it lets us know, no, we would not have been. There are times when we look at the Bible and we criticize the people. How is it they didn't see all these things that Jesus did and that he was Messiah? And we're thinking that because we have accepted Jesus now, that we would have accepted him then. Not necessarily the case. So this message is not an I told you so. It is if you are deceived. To please do better next time. Because a part of this message, many warnings went out. And yes, some of this message is going to touch the political realm. People were warned. And I'm not sure what some people expected. Some people now know they were deceived. I have two receipts in my hand. I'll speak about the second one first. They're from a gas station, or different gas stations. I went to go get some gas yesterday. And when I saw the price, well actually before I got to the, the price issue, I was pulling up to the gas station and it was an eerie scene. Yes, it is possible to pull up to a gas station and no one's getting fuel. But this just seemed eerie. I saw people pull up to the gas station, but they went in maybe to the convenience store for something else. But I was the only one there getting gas. And then I looked down at the pump, and I was like, when did this happen? I was shocked by the price. The thing is, I went to go get some fuel on the 21st of March. The 21st of March, and the price per gallon for premium was $4.029. So basically $4. And yesterday, the 29th of March, the price had gone up to $4.49. $4.99. So basically $4.50. So the price of fuel went up in eight days, 50 cents. 
I was walking through Walmart the other day and I heard two employees speaking. One was speaking about how their wages went up, but they're still suffering because the wages have gone up, but it still has not kept up with inflation. What were people expecting? People were warned. And even today I heard something, and I've heard it before, where some people are speaking about the next election, democracy is at stake. Why is that coming up? There are a lot of countries in the world, and it has the name democratic in the title of the country, but it's not very democratic at all. Democratic Republic of this. And you hear about a country, it's like, it doesn't seem democratic. We need the Holy Spirit of God. Also during the 2020 election, some people were saying, it doesn't matter who wins because Jesus is on the throne. That's one of those things like, don't bother voting. But who people vote for, it matters and everyone is impacted. Abstentia, being absent. When the Antichrist is ruling this earth, Jesus will still be on the throne, but people will be suffering. So please, do not stay on the sidelines, because whatever happens on the field of play is going to impact you. Do not be on the sidelines thinking that you can just be a casual observer. People's decisions are going to impact you. Also, there are people they want to be in a position of power and they want the power to make changes. Some people just want to be in power to exercise power, to control others. And there's a difference. I think it was in 2020, I shared a series of dreams that I had. And a lot of stuff came to pass. There are things I don't know how it's going to unfold. And I mentioned that one of the dreams that I had, I saw Donald Trump at a, it was actually a tea intersection at where I grew up in Jamaica. And I said some stuff, and there was also a part of the dream where there was a public pipe for water that was in the dream, but the pipe had a bung. So the water wasn't able to flow. And I made mention that I believe that Donald Trump is going to have a second term. Will that happen? God knows. In time, we'll find out. There are some things, but there are some warnings. There are other things that went along with it, and I'll share some of those. And for some people, you may not want to watch this because you're affiliated with a certain party. It's also part of the problem. We need to get out of the echo chamber, whether it's the echo chamber of the left or the echo chamber of the right. We need to be on the Lord's side. Just like in Exodus 32, when Moses went down into the Israelite camp after the Lord sent him off Mount Sinai, because the Israelites were in idolatry. We have to be careful about idolatry, whether it's to the left or to the right, whichever country you're in. When Moses went down, he asked who was on the Lord's side. The Levites strapped on their swords and they were on the Lord's side. We have to be on the Lord's side. We have to be able to see truth and error on either side. We need objectivity. We don't need to be in echo chambers where we're only hearing about one side because both sides are going to twist things to their favor. Both sides are going to emphasize one thing and de-emphasize others in effort to gain an advantage. There's some warnings that went out. Also, People came against those who had prophesied about Donald Trump winning the election. And one of the things I said in the message is that basically while people are saying those who said or even prophesied about Donald Trump winning the 2020 election. Yes, cause of concern. But don't rejoice 
because Joe Biden was declared the winner, do not rejoice because some things are coming. So I people want to stone those who were speaking about Trump winning a second term. There was something worse coming. People are seeing those things. The warnings went out. So while, yes, people prophesied that Donald Trump was going to win and be in office, especially those who clung on, they were wrong. Coming against them, you're right. But there was even an overemphasis on those who were wrong about Donald Trump having two consecutive terms. Things were going to get worse. Now this message is called Two Kings. I'm going to actually share a story of Two Kings and some other things. In 2 Kings 8 verses 7 through 14, just because someone is elected or put in an office in whichever means, whether honestly or via subtlety, there are consequences. And yes, there are a few people out there who are correct about Joe Biden being made a president of the United States. But also part of this, it's also something that was mentioned. Could they see or did the Lord show them what was going to happen as a result of that? In this case, the Lord showed, Eli showed Elisha. So in 2 Kings 8, 17 or 7 through 15, and Elisha came to Damascus, and Benadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, The man of God is come hither. And the king said to Hazael, Take a present in thine hand, and go, meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels burdens, burden, and came and stood before him and said, Thy son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, hath sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto him, Go, say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover. So he's telling Hazael to go tell Benadad, king of Syria, that he will recover. But get this, he said, Howbeit the Lord hath shewed me that he shall surely die. So Elisha is telling Hazael, Go tell him he will recover. However, the Lord has shown me that he's going to die. So this is what the prophet said, and then there's a word of the Lord. What a prophet says is not always the word of the Lord. Continuing, and it's like First Kings 22. Micaiah told Ahab, Go to Ramoth Gilead. You'll be successful. But Ahab discerned sarcasm. That wasn't the word of the Lord. If Ahab wanted to hear that, he told him. But then he adjured him in the name of the Lord to tell him the truth. And then he told him about the Lord sending a spirit who would be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets to lead him to battle to die. But the king still wouldn't receive the truth. And had Micaiah incarcerated, Micaiah simply told him, you, if you see me, then the Lord has not spoken to me. Ahab died that day in battle. He wouldn't listen, even when told the truth. And as I've said many times, you have to love the truth above all. When you find out that people are liars, whether by omission or commission, turn away from them. You have to love the truth above all. There are people in Jesus' time who did not want to get turned out of the synagogue so they wouldn't accept Jesus as the Christ. You may not want to get cast out of your party, ostracized by your family, whosoever, and show you're standing up for God's truth. Jesus, he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. If you're not standing up for truth, you're not standing up for Jesus the Christ. So he told me that he will surely die and he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of God 
wept. Hmm, why is this? And Hazael said, Why weep it, my lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Elisha, he saw beyond the results, meaning the outcome of the election, if you will. He saw beyond the outcome. He saw that trouble was coming. And by the way, in 1 Kings 19, when Elijah had ran away from Jezebel and the Lord said the journey had become too much for him, he told him, Elijah, a couple of things to anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, to be prophet in his stead, to anoint Jehu as king, to anoint Hazael, the man who Elisha is prophesying as king over Syria. And basically, those who Hazael don't slay about Jehu slain, and those who Jehu don't slay, that Elisha should slay. Being a prophet back then, it was no joke. Executing judgment. So Elisha saw the evil Hazael would do. The Lord had actually appointed Hazael to be king of Syria. God is sovereign over everything. He decides who ultimately wins. But Elisha, he saw what Hazael would do because when Benadad died, guess who's going to become king in accordance with the word of the Lord. So their strongholds will thou set on fire and their young men will thou slay with a sword and will dash their children and rip up their woman with child. And Hazael said, But what? Is thy servant a dog, that he should do this great thing? So even Hazael couldn't foresee that. Maybe he could foresee himself becoming king once ben died, but doing those wicked things? Hazael couldn't see it. What's going to happen? So the prophecy, it's not always about people coming to agreement with it. And by the way, there's a thing in prophetic ministry where some people are talking about, oh, this is the word of the Lord, if you will pray. And many people have prophesied stuff saying, if people will pray, and people did pray. And it's like, why didn't it still come to pass? That is putting a burden on people. Now, the Lord may say if people pray, but a lot of people are using those terms as a way out by putting burden on people, by saying the outcome of this depends on your prayers. How much do we need to pray? Sad. And Elisha answered, The Lord hath shewed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. So not only did the Lord show him that he was going to be king over Syria, but what he would do while he was king. So in terms of predicting who wins an election, that's great. Now it's up to the Lord, Lord for him to show his will. It's good to see who's going to be the winner of an, of a, an election. But what will the person do? Which direction will the person take the country? So he departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What said Elisha to thee? And he answered, He told me that thou shouldest surely recover. Huh. And it came to pass on the morrow that he, meaning Hazael, took a thick cloth and dipped it in water, and spread it on his face, so that he died. And Hazael
reigned in his stead. Ben-Hadad died. Hazael became king. Elisha foresaw what was going to happen when he became king. During 2020, people on both sides were telling people who to vote for. And some had an agenda and they knew what would happen depend on the outcome of their election. And these things apply to every country because someone's always going to be telling you who to vote for. Seek the Lord. Another story. Because people, they got what they wanted. Whether they were deceived or not, they got what they wanted. Maybe some people didn't get the warnings, but others did, but they did it anyhow. And again, this is not to beat upon people by saying, I told you so, whatever the case may be. This is, if you were deceived, to not let it happen again. There are examples in the Bible where the Lord warned people, if you want this, this is what's going to happen, and they chose it anyhow. People chose Barabbas over Jesus. Another example. Well, First Samuel 8. And something came to mind that I didn't see, but it says, And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. And the name of his firstborn was Joel and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. When you read 1 Samuel 12, you see that Samuel was a righteous man. Sometimes children do not turn out like their parents, which was the case of Joel and Abiah and even Hophni and Phinehas, who were sons of Eli, the priest before Samuel. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Make now, now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. This is a part that struck me before we start reading this. Like all the nations. He speaks about globalism. People have been warned about the Great Reset. And we see those things being implemented. Things where people are slowly being driven out of their homes. As they as they warned you will own nothing and be happy. Well, the first part they're trying to make happen, that you will own nothing. Regarding being happy, it's kind of like in um, North Korea. Do the people love um, what, Kim Jong-un? Do they love him? Or do they have to pretend like they do? Do they have to pretend as if they're happy? And to be like all the nations, again, the global agenda. You heard the saying, America's back. Hmm. So they want to be like all the nations, like everybody else. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign over them. When people want to push away from the Lord, there are times you let them have what they want. In the book of Judges, we see this cycle of people drawing close to the Lord. They stray away from him, start worshipping other gods, 
The Lord allowed them to get persecuted. Next thing you know, they start crying out. The Lord delivered them. They were close to him for a while. Many nations keep on drawing further and further away from the Lord. Many, I'll just say some, some nations have founding documents, the Constitution, the National Anthem, whatsoever, that points to them, I'll just say having a covenant with God, that Yahweh is their God. But then they do things to progressively stray away from the Lord. There are consequences for that. When you want something badly enough, the Lord may allow you to have it, to teach you a lesson. So the Lord said, they haven't rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign over them. See, Samuel was God's representative. They wanted someone else. When people want something badly enough, there are times the Lord allowed them to have it. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. When you hear people, to include professing Christians, not standing up for biblical truth, they're pointing people to other gods. It is as simple as that. Now therefore, hearken unto their voice, howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Again, people were warned. By the way, even Donald Trump himself warned people of things to come, to include gas prices. How many times in the last year you heard the words, Trump was right? He warned people, but they made him out to be a liar, one who should not believed, be believed, yet things he said has come to pass. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked him, for him a king of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And they shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to air his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. By the way, even Barack Obama warned. <laughs> he gave a warning. Never underestimate Joe Biden's ability to burp stuff up. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants, and your maid servants, and your goodliest of men, and your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day, because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. 
Elisha foresaw what Hazael would do. Samuel warned the people, yet they still wanted a king. Warnings went out. Some people were discouraged from listening to certain things. They were labeled as conspiracy theories. When you hear about things being a conspiracy theory, and those things later are proven true, those who are saying there were conspiracy theories were the conspirators. They were the conspiracy theorists. They were the ones leading you astray. Whether they did so knowingly or unknowingly, willingly or unwillingly, they were the liars. They were the conspirators. And you may have heard about members of the media being false prophets. Some scoffed at the remark, oh, they're not prophets. They're false prophets. And they're still leading people astray. Um, prior to the election of 2020, there are two things I was inspired to write. They were posted on Facebook, on the Social Adult Ministries page, and also on the, the blog at socialallo.wordpress.com. And I'll read the entirety of the first thing and a part of the second. The first one was an article on August 24th, 2020, called Brace Yourself. They say, this election is a battle for the heart and soul of America, in brackets, or your country. If or when you hear a politician use those words, I pray you realize the magnitude, impact, and potential consequences of that statement. After all, a nation's leader has the ability to lead a nation closer to or further away from the Lord God. For example, and there are a few. The first one, and because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, and which he made Israel sin, because of his provocation, which he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. That's from 1 Kings 15, 30. Who is in charge? It matters. Just because Jesus is on the throne, who's ruling here on earth over nations, countries, whatever the case may be. Well, countries, municipalities, whatever the case may be, it matters. Another example from 2 Kings 23, 24 to 25. Moreover, Josiah rem removed the mediums and the spiritists and the teraphim and the idols and all the abominations that were in the land of Judah. And in Jerusalem, that he might confirm the word, words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah, the priest, found in the house of the Lord. Before him, there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul, with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, nor did any like him arise after him. So Jeroboam did wickedly, led people to sin. Josiah was righteous, led people into righteousness. Who is in charge? It matters. Continuing, please do not be fooled simply because a person calls Jesus Lord. After all, many politicians have claimed Jesus as their Lord, yet they did evil in his sight and for all the world to see, to include getting people to celebrate sin. That is a major red flag when any person, even the person is professing to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, is trying to get people not only to tolerate but to celebrate sin. Red flag. Please keep in mind that Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? The Lord also said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Choose wisely, because when you choose your nation's leader, you're ultimately choosing which God you are submitting to, the one who gets to lord over your soul. You will know them by their fruit. 
such as if they tolerate and even promote what God calls sin. Whenever you hear about a battle for a soul, it is a covert expression for a war between gods, and there is only one true and living God, Yahweh, whose son's name is Jesus, the Christ. Do not fall for the mesmerizing sound from the Pied Piper who will lead your soul to the pit. Tragically, many professing Christians have fallen for this deception, which makes them very prone to the seductions of the Antichrist and the resultant consequences. I say these things not to shame you, but to open your eyes because something bigger and worse is coming. And the way things were done now, they're going to be done later. And the consequences are going to be far worse. I'll only read in the portion of this article, which was also posted on August 24th, 2020. And it's the false light and the war for your nation. There is a war for your nation. Do you not perceive it? There is a war for your nation, and one of the swords is a saber glowing with a false light. The false light may look honorable, holy, pure and true, but it is a deceiver meant to put a death grip on you. Here in America, the false light is gleaming from sea to shining sea, but unlike a lighthouse, this light will cause a shipwreck that pollutes the world with sludge more devastating than that of the Exxon Valdez. Do not be deceived by smooth speeches with distortions and contortions of the truth to include carefully crafted, crafted in all caps, crafted also pointing to witchcraft, putting a spell on people, carefully crafted facts meant to deceive. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of, unless the mouth is reading a teleprompter with finely crafted speech. Hint, hint. Yes, both sides will put their quote unquote spin on things, potentially using lies of omission and or commission, similarly to the prosecution and defense teams in a courtroom. I pause for a second. Lies of commission and omission. Both are bad. And sometimes a lie of commission is worse because of this. Sometimes a person doesn't state certain things because they don't want to incriminate themselves and they will withhold certain facts. But when a person is willing to tell a lie of commission, that person will look in your face and you just looked at the sky and you saw that it is blue. Maybe not a single cloud in the sky and the person will tell you that it's black and it's about to rain. And the person is lying to you. The per you will see the person do something and the person will tell you, no, that didn't happen. But you just saw, you just heard. You didn't play the tape and it's like it doesn't matter. Lies of commission. And omission. The lies of commission painting a negative picture of someone that they know was not true, but they did it anyhow. And again, it's from August 24th, 2020, prior to the election. So back to the prosecution defense teams, because sometimes they'll withhold certain things, like from the jury. And even a judge at times will rule something as inadmissible evidence. They may also post questions that may or may not be factual, then withdraw them. But the question is meant to cause doubt before the judge can overrule such a misleading question. Yet, despite having withdrawn the question before the intervention, the seeds of doubt may have already been planted and will rapidly germinate. I pause again. In a court, sometimes an attorney will ask a question. And the attorney knows the judge is going to overrule the question. But the attorney asks the question and then withdraws 
the question. And the judge will even instruct the juries or the jurors to disregard the last comment, disregard the last question. But the thing is, the question's already been asked. If that, per, if that lawyer, that attorney, is able to raise that question in people's minds, yes, they may be told to disregard it, but do they actually disregard it? It may be, a, in a sense, a valid point, but it's done in an underhanded way. Things meant to cause doubt. That's how the devil works. In Genesis 3, did God really say, Oh no, you won't surely die. Those things are meant to cause doubt. Continuing, however, in this case, you serve as both judge and jury. You will have to discern what is being said and what was not said to include by the media, much of which leans to the left or the right and seldom reports so you can decide. On the contrary, they try to sway your decision to their point of view, even if the point of view is wrong or even sinful. You will also have to determine if what one part is saying about the other is the whole truth or a series of carefully crafted facts. Anything short of the whole truth is oftentimes a full lie. In parentheses, in disguise. It is much harder to discern a lie when it is encapsulated in a series of facts. However, please do not swallow the devil's bait by being like a dog that sees the clump of bread with the smell of peanut butter. Yet, it is a cloak to mask the pill that is in its midst. Sadly, you may not be able to discern if it is a quote-unquote red pill, one that sheds light on the truth to include the unpleasant truth, or a quote-unquote blue pill, which is meant to put and or keep you in a dangerous state of blissful and potentially deadly ignorance. You see, whereas the dog's master is trying to give its beloved pet, or fur baby, as some dog parents would say, a pill for its good. You do not want the pill, the powers that be are trying to feed your soul. And yes, they have told you, this is for your soul. They stuffed that pill in the words, this election is a battle for the heart and soul of America. It is your heart and soul thereafter. I think I'll go down one more paragraph. By the way, you may be wondering why I repeatedly magnified the word, again in all caps, crafted. Well, it is because words that are crafted to deceive, to intentionally mislead, is a form of witchcraft. The word witch, lowercase, craft, all caps, is a part of witchcraft that is masquerading as the false light. Do not be fooled by those who cloak themselves in Christianity. You may say, they're all professing Christians, to which I counter, all caps and bold, do their actions deny the Lord Jesus they claim is their God. The apostles at what we call a Last Supper even though in John 6, the Lord had told him that one of them was a devil. When Jesus said that one of them was going to betray him, none of them could discern it was Judas. Could he have spotted Judas? Did he see some of this stuff coming? When people were celebrating, could he tell that the party would soon be over? If these were seats only a part of the issue. Again, on March 21st, gas was $4.029 and, and yesterday, the 29th, 
it had gone up to four dollars and four and point four nine nine cents in a week. How much higher will it go? And for some of you here in the United States, you may be like, that's all you're paying for gas? Because you're paying like six dollars or potentially more. And all the blame shifting that's going on. Oh, this happened because of this, this happened because of that. Anyone who takes command in the military knows you're responsible for what the people in your command do or fail to do. You're responsible even if it happened a month prior to you taking command. That thing goes up to leadership to the highest levels of this country and every other country. If someone did something prior to your watch, prior to your command, it is your responsibility to fix it. You now own it. It's kind of like when you buy a car. Some issues may be on the warranty. For some things, you are going to have to fix because it's your car now. It doesn't matter how poorly or even how well the person before it treated it. When something goes wrong, it is now your responsibility. Leaders accept responsibility, even when it's not their fault. But people warned, and some people were labeled as conspiracy theorists. Some people were deplatformed because they didn't want to hear the truth. Some information was suppressed because it would be too damning. They didn't love you. Because they loved you, they would have told you the truth. Again, this message is not to say, I told you so. But if you are deceived. Now for some people, you may have gotten exactly what you wanted and you're happy. But if you are deceived, and you know you heard the warnings, but you followed the wrong voice. I've been down the road before. I've been down the road before. But the moment I heard the Lord's voice, the moment I heard the Lord's voice, I responded in kind. And I got out of that situation. I'm not being the devil's team. Warnings went out. People warned and warned. Now, the Lord had chosen ben and the things that happened. But if you were warned and you followed the wrong voice, lesson learned, but the warnings went out. And what I heard in Walmart the other day wasn't the first time. People are speaking about how hard things are becoming. One of the amazing things about how hard things are becoming is how fast, how quickly it happened. And sadly, while it was going on, I had a message, the first one I read, brace yourself, rather than people telling others to brace themselves, to, to take certain actions, they're making it seem as if everything was fine. And even now, they're still trying to make things seem better as they are. Or better than they are. I understand when you're seeking God's truth. And how the enemy tries to make it seem as if what you think is of God is not of God. To get you to go down his path. There was also a message that the Lord had me put out. And it was about there are two men competing for America. One wants to be her husband, and the other wants to use her for a one night stand. Her husband loves her, the other one 
wanted to use her. The warnings went out. The warnings went out. And I hope you're not surprised by anything that has gone on. The warnings went out. I don't think any of us will be able to stand for the Lord for anything on the day of judgment and to be able to say, you never warned me. Again, this is not a message of condemnation. Even in the harshest of times, the Lord knows how to protect and provide for his people. He had an ark for Noah during the flood. And he can see you through everything. Use wisdom like how Joseph advised the Pharaoh. Let the Holy Spirit of the Lord guide you into all truth. For some things, it may be supernatural provision. Maybe the Lord allow food to last for a long time, like in 1 Kings 17 with the widow of Zarephath when Elijah showed up at her house. Maybe you'll have ravens feed you, like Elijah. Or maybe you need to store up like Joseph. But please, remember those who told you the truth and those who lie to your face, and especially if they continue lying to your face today. God bless you, and may you truly God and protect you during this time. Jesus the Christ, as many have said, he's still on the throne. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings.